Well, hey everybody, this is Chris DeFerio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who has been creating espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. One of the reasons I love La Marzocco so much is, of course, I've used them so much in my career, you know, throughout my couple of decades of coffee experience. It's just been such a reliable piece of equipment. And as an espresso machine company, they listen to the needs of their users. This is why they're so popular around the world and some of the best bars are using La Marzocco for that very reason. Quality, dependability, innovation. Machines like the KB90 espresso machine with the straight-in locking portafilters that is helping with ergonomics. You've also got the scale built into the drip tray, which really helps with the precision of your extraction. You've also got increased cleanliness from the auto flush feature on the machine. And this is just one of many different innovative and beautiful dependable espresso machines that La Marzocco produces for you. And it'll fit you and your business perfectly. La Marzocco is available to help you make the right choice for your coffee shop. All you need to do is reach out info at lamarzocousa.com and one of the salespeople will help you get the machine of your dreams. Again, info at lamarzocousa.com and check them out on their website, lamarzocousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who's creating custom branded mobile apps for your coffee bar to give your customers a truly special mobile ordering experience. It's not just a dot on a map. You don't have to worry about them having to search through all your competitors, et cetera, et cetera. Their phone has your app on it. They open it up. They see your menu. They see your beautiful logo. Maybe your smiling, shining faces and whatever else, you know, it is truly an extension of your brand to your customer. And with Espressly, it's a no risk model. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities, all of the data stored in the app and it integrates with your POS systems, including Square, so I definitely recommend getting this for your coffee shop. If you've been on the fence about mobile ordering and you're in the market for this, go visit Espressly and have them get started on your app today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about slow is fast or how fast should we go in the coffee shop. You know, speed of service is definitely a very important quality of getting coffee in a coffee shop. And even if you're going to get your coffee and sit in the cafe and drink it, getting from arrival to cup in hand is one of the most measured points of service in the coffee industry, especially when you're talking about things like drive throughs and the like. So these are like convenience models that are definitely more focused on speed because that's what convenience is all about. Removing work, removing time. You know, if we could tap into the power of quantum mechanics, we can just make coffee appear in your hand. But here we are, you know, we are a part of an industry that not only values the coffee itself, but the context where the coffee is consumed. And for a lot of us, that is the coffee shop. Even if you are in a fast paced environment, similar to a drive through, or it doesn't have to be just a fast paced coffee shop. The point is though, that there is a limit to how fast we can go before we start to lose something about what we're offering the customer. There is an investment that a customer makes to travel, to go, to consume coffee. And that investment is honored when we go as fast as we can. And the possibility of our speed is limited, I think, or should be limited by how that increased speed impacts other senses, other points of value in the coffee experience, namely hospitality and quality. And so let's talk about that. One, you and I have both been the barista and also seen baristas as customers who are going at lightning speed. So fast, in fact, that it makes you feel uncomfortable. And if you, as a coffee person, understanding where this barista is coming from, even you feel a little uneasy watching it. What do you think a customer is thinking, you know? the frenetic pace that a lot of coffee bars have 
in some part is due to poor planning of the bar. So the resourcing of actually building a bar that makes sense for baristas to work in with good workflow often is an afterthought. So baristas are left to kind of pick up the pace themselves to make up for this lack of planning during the establishing of the coffee shop. So there's that. But there's also this idea that we just want to fight against the line. When the line is there, we're like, okay, how soon can we get this line knocked out? You know, you hear that phrase a lot. Let's knock this line out. Let's knock this rush out. Let's crush the rush. So knock, crush, destroy, whatever. Maybe we should be thinking about why we kind of determine that those phrases are the way that we describe it because there's a lot of pressure on us we don't like that and so what we're doing is we're trying to alleviate ourselves of that pressure by going as fast as we can and this is where the concept of slow is fast comes from or in restaurants they say slow is smooth smooth is fast and you make a lot more headway with consistency than you do with rushing you might have a rush in the coffee shop, but if you yourself are rushing, that doesn't mean you're going fast. That just means you're maybe going dumb, honestly. Like me and you and anybody else who is rushing, we are severing part of our reasoning and capabilities that are going to give us insights as to you know how to handle this group of customers that have come in and serve them well. Instead, what we're doing is we're making ourselves dumber by going too fast. And you can tell in your culture if this is the case simply by the palatable stress level of your baristas. Now, there are things that operators can do to alleviate this stress. One, you can give people permission to not do that. You can start using the mantra, slow is fast. Now, I will say as a caveat, slow does not mean just slow. We're talking about go as fast as you can while still being accurate and detail oriented and intentional. Slow is fast. Okay, great. I'm going to spend six minutes making this one latte because I feel like that's my happy space as a barista. You're not going to be working as a barista for very long. The coffee shop might not be around for very long. So we have to operate with some urgency, but the rushing and the stress is born from an insecurity that, you know, is we can always be doing better. We can always be going faster. And if I just like, you know, cut a corner here and cut a corner there, I'm going to crush this. I'm going to like bang, bang this out. This line will be done. And that really is the time during our business where we need to shine the most. The most eyes are on us and therefore the most minds are thinking about us. They're in our cafe. We have the best opportunity to make a good impression as opposed to when it's just a trickle of one or two people. You know, in that line, that pressure test, we need to use our best thinking and our best motions and our best intentions in that moment. So give people permission to slow down long enough to do the job the right way without making mistakes. When you start knocking cups over, <laughs> I'm notorious for this. My hands will just go everywhere. I'm pretty fast on the bar, but the occasion that somebody has actually videotaped me on the bar, I'm sorry, I'm so old, videotape. <laughs> yeah, when Walter Cronkite visited my store and was videotaping me. No, it was just awkward to watch me sometimes, but I felt like I was being very productive. But I know that part of the experience is hospitality too. So what you don't get with rushing is the interaction. And I'm not saying you have to have a full on conversation with people, but you can have head up service when you have confidence with what's going on on the counter below you. You aren't in this fight or flight mode. You're in control. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast you can go as fast as you can without sacrificing those things. And maybe it is our fault for this rushing and, and going too fast because we set up this idea that you can always go faster. You can always go faster as if when we reach that point, all of a sudden, you know, the business will be successful when you know full well that that's not the case. There are many other factors that can go into how a customer determines they're going to visit a store or not. Yeah a realistic expectation of speed. But even if it's not going fast as you want it to, if you see baristas working and they're pleasant, they are moving, 
they're moving with purpose and urgency and they're creating drinks and they're serving customers. And, and there's this rhythm and control and confidence. Even if it takes you a minute longer, you're going to have a lot more of a charitable view of that than you would if these people were just losing their minds and they saved you 30 more seconds or a minute. I mean, that'd be a minute that I'd want back because the wait was not <laughs> very pleasant. So we have to let people know. Lines happen. That this is a sign of something good. People want your product. Even if you have a clever way of arranging your bar or serving people in line, you may talk about like Chick-fil-A with tablets out in the queue. I still have to wait for my waffle fries. I still do. And it's worth it, especially if I review the tape in my head after I'm driving away and the, the residue of the experience, the memory of the experience is a pleasant one. For me, this is why we do what we do. We want to live on in the memory of the customer in spite of the 10 seconds or 30 seconds we think just shave off and that's just going to make all the difference. It's how we do what we do. It's the consistency that we serve to the customer. And yes, it is the visible urgency and speed of service, but it more so it's the accuracy. More so it's the context within which that speed happens. And we do put a little bit too much emphasis, I think, on lightning speed. And of course, if you're wasting time here or there and you can arrange the bar in a way that saves a couple steps, if you can stage some of your pitchers of milk for orders that you know are going down the line instead of doing one pitcher at a time and that kind of thing, those are helpful little tips. And customers might go, yeah, that's really cool. They got it out really quick. But I've had customers actually tell me that they don't want their coffee so quick because this is their break. They want to hang out and you know, some of them even don't even want to go back to work. So if I can make it take longer for them, I've had one or two people say, all the better. It's okay. I just have to go back to work, they say. So, you know, hospitality is done for the customer. All of this is in service to them. Let's take on speed of service, slow as fast, and make sure that the concept of timeliness in our beverages is also done in concert with the, the hospitality, the feel that people get, the accuracy and consistency. And that's a winning combination, in my opinion. So I hope that this was a helpful episode today. And as always, I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.